militia allies have finally taken over one county in America. They have successfully done it. Let me bring your attention to California. It's a place called Shasta, okay? Nearly 53% of the county elected to recall, let's put this picture up, the supervisor, Leonard Modi, who by the way, is known to be a sensible Republican. A Republican former Reading police chief following almost two years of threats and conspiracy theories over the board's pandemic safety measures. So basically, this guy was saying to his other guys, hey, you know, nobody stole an election. There's no extreme conspiracy theory of people who live on another planet coming to take us over. None of this is real QAnon, none of this is real militia group. So he was that guy, all right, sensible Republican. So they outed him, they ousted him. Uh, This feels very much to me like the Nazi party in the early 30s of Germany. That's what Mr. Modi, the sensible Republican, told the local television station. Where, you know, they came out with their brown shirts and they intimidated people, they bullied them into silence. I'm proud that I stood against anarchists, extremists, and white supremacists wanting to take over our country. As a lifelong resident of the county, I'm very concerned with this change in leadership. And its effect on our community, damn, sounds like he's making good sense to me. But obviously the conspiracy theorist, the QAnon people, the militia of his town thought otherwise. Modi, his family and supporters face threats from militia members and their allies, including (coughs) militia member and mask opponent, Carlos Zapata over public health measures and what some saw as insufficient support for gun rights, okay? Here's some of that video. Uh, I don't blame you for wearing masks because I'd be hiding my face too if I was you. I'm telling you right now that right now we're being peaceful and and you better be happy that we're, we're good citizens, that we're peaceful citizens, but it's not gonna be peaceful much longer. Okay, and this isn't a threat, I'm not a criminal, I've never been a criminal, but I'm telling you that good citizens are gonna turn into real concerned and revolutionary citizens real soon. That we're building, we're organizing, and we'll work with law enforcement or without law enforcement. But you won't stop us when time comes because our families are starving. Because this is a warning for what's coming. It's not gonna be peaceful much longer. It's not gonna be rah rah, it's not gonna be speeches, it's not gonna be gathered outside saying a pledge of allegiance, it's not gonna be waving flags, it's gonna be real. When you've seen the things that I've seen, I went to war for this country. I've seen the ugliest, dirtiest part of humanity. I've been in combat and I never want to go back again. But I'm telling you what, I will to save this country. If it has to be against our own citizens, it will happen. And there's a million people like me and you won't stop us. That man, his side won. Everything he said, he means. I believe that. Law enforcement in this country, leaders, community members, We have to take seriously these individuals, they are dangerous. Modi's ouster, the guy who's the sensible one, tips the majority of the five member board to a movement aligned with the Cottonwood militia now. The militia now controls the local government. With his likely replacements as either construction superintendent Dale Ball or school board member Tim Garman, who are separated by only 33 votes and each of them celebrated their victory with known militia members of that local community. No matter how this works out, the militia is now in charge of one American jurisdiction of one local government. They got one now, okay, locked and loaded. Okay, um, let's put up a picture of the billionaire that funded the recall. It attracted the interest of Connecticut film producer who donated $450,000 to the recalls political action committee nearly two years after donating $100,000 to the campaign of the current supervisor Patrick Jones who celebrated Modi's ouster. The 60 year old spent years unsuccessfully battling the county in court 
because of business deals, all right? So now they are in control. This is how it starts. Maria, thoughts? Um, so we've actually interviewed somebody by the name of Mike German, who mm. was an FBI official, yep. um, who actually infiltrated white supremacist and militia organizations in the 90s when he was a, an FBI agent. And he was so horrified by what he saw, he came back to the heads of FBI and he was like, look, we need to put a lot of attention into the militia groups, into the white supremacist groups. This is this is a real problem for our country. And he basically got a lukewarm response from mm. the FBI. And when I was trying to understand why, he said, look, the FBI in its majority is still white men of privilege. It's, I think at that point when we interviewed him, it was 70% white men at the FBI. So they look at members of the militia, for example, and they're like, "Oh, that's just Uncle Bob, that's just crazy Uncle John, and that's just crazy Uncle Tony. They just go and do some crazy stuff in the woods and we don't have to worry about them. And what we're showing, the reality is, and what he said, which is the scariest part for me and then the part that as a journalist made my antennas go up, which he said, we are organizing, we are prepping, we are getting ready, we are studying. And this is exactly what I heard from white supremacists in Reading, mm. Pennsylvania in the mid 1990s. They were like, yeah, we're not gonna, we're gonna let our hair grow out. So you think we can call us skinheads? We're gonna let our hair grow out. Wow. We're gonna get educated, we're gonna infiltrate. And we're going to start taking over, and we just saw that. You know, and I'm also reminded that a DOJ memo went out years ago that said the number one threat to domestic policing is the emergence of white supremacists in their ranks. We didn't take that report seriously. 